In the world of sports cars, there is one car that has remained incredibly dominant for the last few decades, and really, it's the performance benchmark for any sports car from cheap to expensive, and that's the BMW M3. Part of building an amazing car obviously needs to look good, it needs to sound good, it needs to handle great, it needs to be you know, relatively affordable, it's a little bit iffy in the BMW world, but most importantly, it has to have a really, really good engine. Obviously, BMW has been making the M3 for quite a while, so they've gone through quite a few different engines. So with that in mind, let's look at the E30 M3 all the way up to the current G80 M3. And let's look at every single engine that BMW has ever used in an M3. To kick this off, we have to rewind the clock all the way back to 1986, which is when BMW released their first ever M3 with the E30 M3. Technically, BMW started development of the E30 M3 back in 1984, but that's besides the point here. What's special about the E30 is that it was a homologation car produced in pretty small numbers, which it's obviously gone on to become a legendary collector's car since then. But we're not here to admire the E30 as a whole. We're here to look at the 2.3 liter inline four cylinder engine under the hood known as the S14. What's really interesting about this engine is the fact that it's not an inline six, which BMW had a lot of success with during that time and well after that time. Hell, BMW is still using the inline six configuration today, but more on that later. The reason that BMW used a four cylinder engine for the E30 M3 as compared to an inline six engine was weight. One of their big goals with the E30 was to keep it as light as possible, so using a smaller four-cylinder engine was one of the sacrifices that they had to make. The block of the S14 actually came from the BMW M10, which is very closely related to the BMW M12 that was used in Formula One, and could produce upwards of 1500 horsepower when maxed out. With that in mind, the block of the S14 is clearly overkill for a naturally aspirated application. But BMW already had the tooling and designs completed, so it made sense to use this specific engine block. What's kind of interesting is that the block design actually goes back to the late 1950s, as it was BMW's first modern four-cylinder engine. The cylinder head came from the BMW M88, which is the inline-six engine found in the BMW M1. Now you might be wondering, how did they use an inline-six engine head on a four-cylinder engine? And the answer is really simple. They just cut off two cylinders worth of the head. While that's technically true for the development stage, in reality, the head on the S14 is just a shortened version of the M88 head, sharing nearly the exact same design, but shrunken down for a smaller application. On top of the head, you'll find dual overhead cams, and beneath the head, you'll find a really beefy rotating assembly with a pretty high 10.8 to one compression ratio. By today's standards, that might not be considered high, but for the 1980s, that was a pretty gnarly compression ratio. On top of all that, the S14 was equipped with individual throttle bodies for improved throttle response and airflow. This all equals out to 197 horsepower. That might not sound like a lot, but you have to remember that this was a very small, naturally aspirated engine from the 1980s. In all reality, what this engine was outputting for its size at the time was nearly unheard of. For reference, the 1986 Mustang with a 5 liter V8 output 200 horsepower which really puts in perspective how impressive the S14 was at its time. I think it's also worth noting that BMW didn't stop there with the S14, because the Sport Evolution, also known as the Evo 3, used an improved 2.5 liter version of this engine with more power and torque, to the tune of 235 horsepower in road legal configuration and 374 horsepower in the race configuration. But enough on the S14, I think it's time we jump forward to the BMW E36, which itself came out in 1990, but it wasn't until 1992 that we saw the M3 version of the E36. Unlike the E30, the E36 wasn't a special homologation car, and as such, it was built in much larger quantities than the E30. Under the hood of the E36, BMW ditched the four-cylinder engine in favor of an inline six, which is really the configuration that many BMW enthusiasts would have preferred in the E30, but that's besides the point. This specific inline six engine is the BMW S50. It's at this point that I'd like to note that the North American models received a slightly detuned version of the S50 and then later the S52. For this particular video, we're going to keep it simple and look at the S50 B30, which was used in most countries outside the US and Canada. Unlike the S14, which was a bit of a mishmash of parts, the S50 is directly based on the BMW M50. Interestingly enough, 
the biggest BMW M50 engine was 2.5 liters, but for the S50, BMW increased the bore to 86 millimeters and the stroke to 85.8 millimeters, which bumps the displacement to 3 liters. Along with that, BMW increased the compression ratio to 10.8 to 1, and BMW M ported and polished the cylinder head. Just like the S14, the S50 received individual throttle bodies for improved throttle response and power output. So really, BMW took a simpler approach with the E36 M3 by taking an existing engine and simply making it better, which is the approach that they've used on pretty much every single M car since then. I think it's also worth noting that later on, BMW released the S50 B3 II to replace the S50 B3 II in countries outside the US and Canada. And this version of the S50 had its displacement increased to 3.2 liters, as well as using a higher compression ratio and improved double Vano system. All this equals out to 240 horsepower for the S50 B30 US, as well as the S52, which are the two North American engines, and 282 horsepower for the S50 B30 used in the majority of the world, and later 316 horsepower for the S50 B32 used in the 1995 and later E36 M3 cars. That takes us to 2000, when BMW introduced the E46 M3. But again, the platform itself was launched in late 1997, but it wasn't until 2000 that we saw the introduction of the M3. For many hardcore BMW enthusiasts, this is considered the pinnacle of the M3, as it's the last naturally aspirated inline six powered M3 but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. Besides the amazing design, which really hasn't aged at all, the E46 M3 was also a fantastic handling car with tons of modern BMW features while still maintaining a relatively low weight around 3,500 pounds, depending how it's specced out. Under the hood of the E46 M3 is the BMW S54, which was touted by BMW as a performance version of the M54, following their new tradition of taking an existing engine and improving upon it for their M cars. By marketing the S54 as a hopped up version of the M54, it really makes their non-M cars, like the M54, seem really good. If they can just take that engine and modify it for their flagship performance car, then the base engine must be pretty amazing, right? Unlike the base engine, the M54, the S54, which was touted as a performance engine, uses a heavy cast iron block, which is actually based on the block from the S50 in the E36. Now you might think it's really weird because the M54, that the S54 is supposed to be based on, uses a lightweight aluminum block, but the S54 uses a heavier material. Realistically, it's because the S54 is an evolution of the S50 rather than the M54. It features a bore and stroke of 87 by 91 millimeters, bringing total displacement up to 3.2 liters, which was up from the S50, which was only a 3 liter, unless you're talking about the S50 B32. It also features a forged and nitrated crankshaft with 12 counterweights, forged connecting rods, and high compression forged pistons. All of this was designed to help the rotating assembly handle the stress of high RPM, with a red line of around 8,000 RPM. The aluminum 24 valve cylinder head got a pretty major redesign as compared to the S50's head. Not only is the S54 head lighter, but it also includes an improved continuously variable double Vano system, new hollow camshafts, and finger followers instead of the old bucket style lifters. One of the more notable features, which has since become kind of a BMW staple, are the individual throttle bodies. All that fancy stuff equals out to an impressive 338 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. Unfortunately, the variant that we had here in the US had a few small changes to help with emissions compliance, so ours produces a little bit less horsepower at 333 horsepower, and 262 pound-feet of torque. That takes us up to 2007 with the E90 generation M3, and what makes this M3 so much different and so controversial as compared to every other M3 is the fact that it doesn't have an inline six engine under the hood. Rather, it has a V8. When you consider the fact that BMW probably wanted to keep the M3 naturally aspirated and that they hadn't dropped their first ever mass production turbocharged engine until that exact year, the switch to a V8 starts to make sense. With other popular sports cars producing significantly more power than what the E46 M3 offered, they really needed to step it up with the E90. And if they refused to accept forced induction on the M3, then they needed to add displacement, which is exactly what they did. Could they have technically given the E90 M3 a massive inline six? Sure, 
but they didn't. This specific V8 is the S65, which came in a few different variants, but the main version used is the S65 B4 Zero, which is a four liter engine. But BMW also has the S65 B44 for some special edition models, and that engine is a more powerful 4.4 liter. Interestingly enough, the S65 isn't actually based on a regular BMW production engine. Rather, it's derived from the S85 V10 engine used in the M5, but simply shrunken down to a V8 rather than a V10. The S65 shares the same cylinder dimensions of a 92 millimeter bore and 75.2 millimeter stroke, as well as individual throttle bodies, double vanos, and an insanely high 12 to one compression ratio. While you might think that BMW switching to a big 90 degree V8 with dual overhead cams would be a negative in terms of weight, you have to remember that the S54 was a cast iron engine, where the S65 is cast aluminum. All in, the S65 is actually a bit lighter than the S54, while also bumping power output up quite a bit to 414 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. While the S65 is very interesting and one of the best sounding V8 engines ever, in my opinion, the fact that it was a V8 really ticked off a lot of BMW enthusiasts, but the N54, their first mass-produced turbocharged engine, was released the same year as the S65, and by the time the next M3 rolled around, BMW had really figured out how to get their new turbocharged inline-six engines to perform to their liking. That takes us to the F80 M3, and as you might have guessed by what I said a few seconds ago, the F80 ditched the V8 and returned to the inline-six engine configuration that so many BMW enthusiasts loved but now it wasn't naturally aspirated. Instead, it was turbocharged. And again, BMW didn't have much of a choice on this. With many comparable cars switching to forced induction, BMW was forced to do the same if they wanted to stay on top as the benchmark for a performance car. So that's exactly what they did. This time around with the M3, they based the engine on the aforementioned turbocharged N-series engine. More specifically, they based it on the second evolution of the N54, which was the N55 and this new M3 engine was known as the S55. And when I say that the S55 is based on the N55, I really mean it. In terms of components, they have a massive amount in common, but the S55 is modified with high performance applications and track use in mind. According to BMW, the N55 and the S55 share 75% of their engine components with the remaining 25% of the engine components being new developments. On the side of the S55, you'll find two monoscroll turbochargers, each of which have cast in exhaust manifolds. With this system, each turbo has its own bank, meaning each turbo is powered by three cylinders out of six in the engine. One of the cool features of the S55 is the indirect charge air cooling with two heat exchangers and a separate cooling circuit with an electric pump rather than a typical front mounted intercooler. BMW did this for a variety of reasons, but at the end of the day, it was done with performance in mind. And what's really impressive about the S55's twin turbo system is that it's actually the same weight as the N55 single turbo system, according to BMW. Looking at some basic specs and info, we can see that the S55 is set up pretty well. It's a three liter inline six engine with twin turbos, and it uses an all aluminum design. So we're talking about an aluminum head and aluminum block. And more importantly, the block is a closed deck. Inside the cylinder head, we have dual overhead cams with Vanos. In terms of power, the S55 ranges from 359 horsepower all the way up to 493 horsepower, with most of them around 425 to 444 horsepower, depending on the application. While the S55 is an amazing engine that has a ton of potential with a mild amount of aftermarket parts, it can be a little problematic. So when the new G80 M3 came out, BMW made the very smart move to base their next M3 engine on the Supra's B58, which as you may know, Toyota had a big hand in developing, specifically making it much more reliable. That takes us to 2020, when BMW launched the G80 and its hideous front end. Following the normal trend for BMW, the S58 is a three liter inline six engine with twin turbos. And just like the S55, as we mentioned a moment ago, it's based on a normal BMW engine. This time, the S58 is based on the B58, which is much more refined and reliable as compared to the N55. Because the S58 hasn't been out for very long, there really aren't many performance modifications for it. But that being said, Tuning software is already available for the S58, and what's crazy is the amount of power that it's capable of as compared to any other M car, 
especially when tuned on ethanol. In totally stock form, the S58 puts down around 473 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque, which is already an increase of 48 horsepower and 36 pound-feet over the standard S55. But with some basic bolt-ons and ethanol fuel, we're already seeing some S58 engines make upwards of 650 wheel horsepower and 650 wheel torque, with some pro tuners even getting close to 700 wheel horsepower on a stock turbo. Now for reference, a Bolton S55 running on ethanol fuel will generally max out around 600 wheel horsepower. So it's safe to say that the S58 is by far the most powerful BMW M3 engine ever. So that is that. That is every single BMW M3 engine ever. And I wanna know what you guys think. What is your favorite engine in the M3? I know for a lot of hardcore BMW guys, they're really gonna gravitate towards the S54 as it was the last inline six naturally aspirated engine. And it was in arguably the best M3 with the E46. Me personally, I'm kind of a fan of the S55 because I've driven and ridden in a handful of different F80 M3s. And my personal car, the BMW 135i has an N55, which is shares most of its components with the S55. So I'm a big fan of that platform as it makes a ton of power really, really easily. But I wanna know what you guys think, so make sure you let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, be sure to smash the thumbs up button because it really helps me out. Get subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos. Check out some of the other videos on the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.